Welcome into the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Senior. Give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior. Coming up on today's show, five players to watch against the Los Angeles Chargers as the 49ers take part in their second preseason game on Sunday night. We'll be doing another watch party for it right here on the channel. But first, get into the comment section right now, Faithful, and predict the score for Sunday's game between the Niners and the Chargers. Niners entering this game five and a half points favorites. The over-under is something that I'm not going to touch, but predict the score in the comment section. And if you're right in the comment section, I'll be sure to give you a shout out on a future show. Players to watch against the Chargers. Let's start off in the backfield with running back Jermichael Hasty. He really popped and flashed for me against Kansas City last weekend. 10 carries for 63 yards in that touchdown. Of course, he did cough the football up in a really inopportune time when Josh Rosen was playing. Josh Rosen also throwing a pick. So the Niners had two turnovers on the Chiefs' side of the field. Never ideal. But because no Elijah Mitchell last Saturday, and because he's going to be out for the next couple of weeks, Jamichael Hasty has a really good opportunity to make this roster, but also get a bulk of the second half snaps after guys like Trey Sermon, as well as Wayne Gallman. And I think because of that, he has a chance to crack this roster. Jeff Wilson is on PUP. Elijah Mitchell, maybe he's going to be placed on PUP so that they can put him later onto the practice squad. And now the Niners are down two running backs, which opens up a door for Jamichael Michael Hasty to make this roster against KC. I really thought he ran hard. He was certainly decisive. Has to focus in on that ball security, though. And this roster battle that has come down to Hasty and Gallman is pretty fascinating to me because I thought Wayne Gallman, coming in for Saquon Barkley with the Giants last year, did a lot of really good things in the run game as well as the pass game. But Hasty is a lot younger than Gallman is, a little bit cheaper. And you can bet on a little bit of upside here with one of your homegrown talents. And as we know, the Niners have just done a tremendous job at developing running backs under Kyle Shanahan. So pick a back for this roster if you had to choose one. Wayne Gallman, Jamichael Hasty. Type WG for Gallman. Type JH for Hasty. I might lean Gallman, but after Sunday... Maybe we'll go with Jamichael Hasty, who I think does have some talent. Another player to watch. Let's get to the offensive line here. Jalen Moore, rookie out of Western Michigan. 49ers really like him. He played left tackle and guard in college. And originally, the Niners thought, okay, this guy's pretty big. He can play guard for us. But they've slid him out to tackle, and he's been getting starting left tackle reps with Trent Williams out because of knee soreness. So first team reps already for a rookie, and he's going to be able to go up against Joey Bosa on Sunday. I want to see how the rookie holds up against one of the best edge rushers in the entire NFL. Had a rocky debut against the Chiefs, got beat around the edge, which led to a sack of Trey Lance, one of four first round uh four first half sacks, excuse me, against Lance on Saturday. But the Niners like his versatility at guard and tackle. I just want to see on Sunday whether he projects more as a guard or a left tackle. And there's no question that on Sunday night, the offensive line needs to step up. In that preseason opener against the Chiefs, Trent Williams sat out, Alex Mack sat out. So you were down a couple of really premier players along that offensive line. Here's the deal, though. The second team offensive line was bad. The third team offensive line looked extremely rusty. You had your prize possession in Trey Lance, the number three pick, get sacked four times in the first half alone. Fortify the front, Jalen Moore can be a big part of that. It's football season, which means it's time to lay down the lettuce and make some bets, and you can make some bets with our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Go to chatsports.com slash 49bet, and when you enter the promo code NINERS125, you get a 125% deposit bonus, meaning if you put $100 into your account, you get $225 back. You can bet on Niners Chargers on Sunday night if you want to. As I mentioned, Niners five and a half point favorites, or you can just wait for the regular season. Week one, Niners touchdown favorites against the Detroit Lions. You have to use that link as well as that promo code for that deal to apply. Maybe the most obvious player to watch on Sunday, it's Trey Lance. How is he going to build on his professional debut after barely playing at all at North Dakota State? 
expected to see a lot of action against the Chargers on Sunday. And his 80-yard dime ball right in stride to Trent Sherfield on that design quarterback rollout to his left when he threw across the field right to Sherfield for the touchdown, to me, it was the highlight of the entire preseason slate last week. And there's no question that what we've seen so far is that Trey Lance is raw. If you're surprised by that, you're uninformed because Trey Lance played one game at North Dakota State in 2020 because of COVID, played only one full season throughout his collegiate career, and during the draft process, he was only 20 years old. So give this guy some time. We're going to see him get extended reps, hopefully, which is really good and for him and his development. And I hope that Kyle Shanahan gives him a long leash on Sunday night. The improvements I want to see from the number three pick on Sunday night against the Chargers. A couple of things. Situational football. In training camp, as well as on critical downs against the Chiefs last Saturday, he hasn't been good in situational football type of situations where he's in the red zone not getting the snap off in time before the play clock expires, or even on third downs and critical downs where you need to move the chains and maybe make an audible or a check at the line of scrimmage. So I want to see Trey Lance improve from a situational aspect. I'd also like to see him get rid of the ball a little bit faster because he was sacked four times. I'm not going to say that those problems were all on Trey Lance, even though he took accountability for them. It was a lot on the offensive line, but he got sacked four times because he was holding on to the football a little bit too long. Also, selective aggressiveness. What I mean by that is this. He tried to force the ball in some really tight windows in between a couple of defenders when he should have just went to a check down or pulled the football down to run. Those interceptions against first-team defenses will lead to turnovers and if they come at inopportune times, that is very costly for you. Lastly, patience. Patience with Trey Lance. You have to give this time this guy some breathing room to develop because the skill set is certainly there. He has no ceiling. He has unlimited upside. You don't want to damage his confidence in the early going. So be patient with him. Don't throw too much on his plate. Ease him along. When he's ready to play, you play him, but let that potential fulfill over time. As for how people thought Trey Lance did in his debut, Greg Cosell, I think, is one of the best NFL quarterback evaluators out there in the media right now. He had this to say about Lance's debut. Overall, I thought he was a little unsettled. He was a little quick. When the primary read was there, he was decisive. When it wasn't there, he was a little hesitant. He hurried his mechanics, and he played a little fast when he had to come off of his number one read. I think he needs some work on his pace and touch throws in this game on some throws that require pace and touch. He was a little too much of a fastball pitcher, which goes along with some of the things that I was saying in my own scouting report. Over under one and a half touchdowns on Sunday night for Trey Lance against the Chargers, as Arnold Schwarzenegger once said. Type O for over, type U for under. I'm going to go over. I'm typing my O for over. I think Trey Lance plays really well. He spins it, maybe even a rushing touchdown in a goal line situation. I'm going to submit my O for over. Let me know what you're thinking. This is why you subscribe to the 49ers Report, because we do fun segments like this where we do a game preview for a preseason game, regular season game, including five guys to watch. But also here on the channel, we do segments like surprise cut candidates as the Niners continue to cut down their roster. Moving forward, we're going to be doing live shows every single Tuesday. And as part of our live shows, we do a couple of mailbags where we take all of your 49ers related questions. So hit that red subscribe button down below or go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV. Help get the Niners Report by Chat Sports to 40,000 subscribers. Talanoa Hufonga, he was all over the field against the Chiefs last weekend, man. And he has just turned out to be a football player who is a joy to watch. He's getting a ton of safety reps without Jaquaski Tart in the lineup, as well as Tavarius Moore, both of those guys down with injuries. And I really like what he did against the Chiefs last weekend because he played a little bit of safety. He played a little bit of hybrid linebacker. He was contributing on special teams as well. And for me, this is just a classic example of a guy at USC who put forward a lot of production, 
but his athletic testing numbers weren't anything extraordinary, right? 4640 guy, he's not the biggest cat. Uh, he's not going to be the most flashy player like a Fred Warner going sideline to sideline just wreaking havoc, but his instincts are next level. His ability to dissect and read plays as a safety, as a linebacker, and on special teams, the knack for that is a special quality that you simply cannot teach. It just exists within you as a very good football player. So this is what I want you to do on Sunday Night Niner, gang. Treat yourself. In the latter portions of this game, don't necessarily watch the football and do the same thing with Fred Warner in the regular season. Just watch Ufonga. Look out for the Polynesian hair and the locks flowing out of the helmet and just watch how this guy plays the game because he plays like his hair is on fire. He's got great instincts and sometimes what he lacks in that 4-6 speed, he makes up for it with getting a step ahead of the play. So what's your level of excitement for Ufonga as a Niner? Not necessarily in this game in preseason week two. Scale it for me from one to ten. One being, I'm not excited about this cat at all. Ten is, I'm elated about Hufanga. Let's get to Jordan Matthews now. I find his story really fascinating. We're talking about a guy who's drafted in the second round out of Vanderbilt by the Philadelphia Eagles. And the first couple of years in his NFL career, he had so much success as a wide receiver. Then he gets hit with a couple of injuries. He gets traded to Buffalo. He pops around the NFL for a little while, including a short stint with the Niners last year. And he realized in his late 20s, he was getting toward the end as a wide receiver in his NFL career. So what does he do? He pivots, he puts on 30 pounds of muscle and trains at a new position with George Kittle throughout the offseason and makes a position switch from wide receiver to tight end. And his first game as a tight end against the Chiefs, I thought he looked really good, catching the football, picking up yards after it, but also blocking. He was in on that block that allowed Jermichael Hasty to score that touchdown late in the game uh, as the go-ahead touchdown. He made some plays on special teams as well. And what Kyle Shanahan loves, he loves versatility. He likes guys who can play a couple of different positions, but also he likes his weapons on the offensive side of the football. And Jordan Matthews is a weapon. If he proves that he can be a competent, capable blocker, but also play special teams. But if you need him in a pinch to go out wide and play wide receiver or in the slot or in tight end, he'll be able to serve a couple of different purposes on this roster. And when you talk about roster cuts, you favor guys usually at the back end of the roster who have some versatility over guys who are one-sided. So I think J. Matt's stock is soaring right now because of all of the reasons that I mentioned, of him giving you a little bit of everything. And people have always raved about his character. He's been famous in practice for when he catches a, touchdowns, uh, cut, catches a touchdown, just running routes. He just takes it to the house full speed. Those types of guys culture changers, their tone setters, and J-Matt has been that throughout his career. I just listed a bunch of guys who I'm excited to see against the Chargers on Sunday. Who are you most excited to see against LA? Who are your eyes peeled on? Give me some names in the comment section. Before we get out of here on this segment, preseason week two, we're going to be live here on the 49ers Report for a watch party. Around 40,000 people joined us last week. Hopefully we can eclipse that number on Sunday night. Niners going in as five and a half point favorites over under set at 34 kickoff 7 30 p.m. Eastern on Sunday night 4 30 p.m. Pacific we'll be live right here on chat sports and also predict the score in the comment section if you're right I'll give you a bunch of props and I'll probably give you some shout outs on a future 49ers report